It's good to have you with us this Wednesday morning. When it comes to getting people motivated, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale is one of the leading lights. In fact, he's been talking and writing about the power of positive thinking for much of his 87 years. His book, The Power of Positive Thinking, has sold more than 15 million copies around the world. Well, now Dr. Peale's in Australia for a series of seminars. It is, in fact, his third visit to our country, and he's with us in the studio this morning. Good morning to you. Nice to meet you. Good morning, Steve, and it's a great honor and privilege to be on your great show with you. Well, it's nice to have you with us. Tell me, was there always, a, was there a time when you were not a positive thinker? Have you always been a positive thinker? <laughs> no. I had the biggest inferiority complex that I've ever known about. I was shy, timid, reticent, bashful. All those words describe me. And I had to learn positive thinking the hard way. So it didn't come naturally to me. One of your favorite sayings is, it is not the facts that decide success, but your attitude to the facts. Do you want to explain that a little? Well, we have a, a great uh, psychiatric center in the United States. You, you probably know about it, the Menninger Clinic in Topeka, Kansas. And one of their chief doctors told me years ago that attitudes are more important than facts. I said, Doctor, that couldn't be true. A fact is a fact, and it, it is of supreme importance. No, he said, it's your attitude toward the fact that determines what happens with, in relation to the fact. So it's how you think about a problem, or about a disaster, or about a failure, or about a situation. So it's the way you approach the problem? Mentally. Yes. What about those people who, in approaching the problem, would twist the facts, manipulate the facts? Well, they're going to turn out badly because you, you, you have to be honest, factual, and realistic in your approach. If you start twisting it, it'll twist further and you'll end up with a twisted situation. Do you think there's anything, though, that you can't achieve through positive thinking? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, for example, uh, I might practice positive thinking from now till doomsday, but I couldn't go out and compete in a fast race on foot uh, at my age. Uh, yes, you, you must always be realistic, but don't be too realistic. Because if you are, th then you veer off into the negative. You say it can't be done. You were the first to preach the value of positive thinking. But there have been many who've come before you and, in fact, uh, after you. And, in fact, this country has seen a lot of them. They've come out of the woodwork. Many would say <laughs> they're a dime a dozen. Yeah. And there are those that followed you who don't, if you like, put the brakes on, who don't say you've got to be realistic about all of this. You can't achieve the impossible. There is a danger in that, isn't there, in setting goals that are simply unattainable. I have a friend in Chicago. He publishes a big magazine called Ebony. His name is John Johnson. And he made one of the wisest suggestions. He said that he started in poverty. He set a little realizable goal. And when he achieved that, he set another little goal and so on until they all added up to big goals. Mm. And he's the publisher of uh, one of the yeah. most, ex most popular magazines in the country. Over the years, you've been a very close associate of a number of American presidents, six that I can think of, including Truman and Carter and, of course, Nixon. Were you surprised to discover that any of those presidents uh, didn't have the motivation, didn't set the goals, and having reached the White House, really didn't know what they were doing there? Well, any president, any premier, any ruler, anywhere, when you get right down to it, is only a man or a woman. And they have all the failure, failing and frailties of human nature. Uh, my father used to say that no ordinary man was ever elected president of the United States. And that's pretty much true. 
but uh, uh, even an extraordinary man can do uh, unusual things. Mm. <laughs> Enjoy your stay in Australia. It's been nice talking with you. Thank you, Steve. It's a great pleasure to be here. And when we come back, Barry Jones on those who have made a mark in history and Australian colonial paintings that are up for sale. <laughs>